Words are pretty important. In fact, language would be virtually useless without them. And words are often very misunderstood, especially in a living language that's still evolving. Old words fall out of disuse, new words come into use, and some words can even become their own antonyms. I'm looking at you, peruse. This is nothing new. Throughout history, words have been misunderstood. Don't believe me? Just watch. Do a quick online search for the word hedonism and it will turn up an adults only resort in Jamaica. And that's kind of appropriate considering what most people think hedonism means, which is basically unabashed, unadulterated indulgence of every whim or desire, especially sexual ones. But it turns out that's not the original definition of hedonism. And in fact, that definition is called folk hedonism among philosophers who know hedonism. Under the classical definition, hedonism divides life into basically two components, pleasure and pain. Under hedonism, pleasure is inherently good and is valuable. Pain is inherently bad and should be avoided. But you have to keep in mind that pleasure can be more than just sexual. For example, it can be intellectual, like reading a book. Or it can be altruistic, like reading a book to somebody who can't read. And the true hedonists of classical Greece would point out that short-term pleasure should be avoided if it doesn't lead to long-term pleasure, which would be far more valuable. So keep that in mind, hedonists in Jamaica. Britain's Prince Charles was recently called a Luddite for speaking out against genetically modified organisms. And so was Jonathan Franzen when he spoke out against Twitter and eBooks. And Luddite's been long used technically to describe someone who's a technophobe, somebody who scorns new technology in favor of the old version. But this is pretty far from the actual definition of what Luddite means, or at least where it originally came from. It turns out the Luddites were a group of skilled weavers from Nottinghamshire in the early 19th century in England, right at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Well, because of the Industrial Revolution, the Luddites found themselves being replaced by automated machines. They didn't like this very much, nor did they like the fact that their trade unions were suddenly outlawed, leaving them little recourse to defend their jobs. So what did they do? They rioted. The workers attacked the looms, burned mills, and even skirmished with the British army. In the end, a total of 25 Luddites were hanged, and another 63 were shipped off to Australia, which is almost as bad. The Luddites, who named themselves after a man named Ned Ludd, a fabled figure from Sherwood Forest who attacked looms decades earlier, weren't anti-technology. They were pro-protecting their jobs and wages. So the idea that someone who is opposed to new technology is a Luddite is actually kind of off. You Nimrod, have you ever called someone this to tell them that they're a stupid jerk? Well, it turns out the original Nimrod who's mentioned in the Bible is not painted this way at all. And he may actually have a cartoon to blame for his name being dragged through the mud like this. The original Nimrod, who is the great-grandson of no other than Noah and the grandson of Ham, actually founded Babylon, which was the first great empire after the Great Flood. Nimrod was a skilled hunter and uh, emperor, and he was responsible for building the Tower of Babel, which is a huge tower with a temple on top that was constructed to destroy God. Well, God had other ideas, so he created language among the workers so they couldn't communicate with one another, and eventually they just gave up and went back down to the ground. So how did Nimrod come to mean slow-witted or dumb? Some people trace it back to a 1940s Bugs Bunny cartoon. Bugs is being hunted by Elmer Fudd, and he calls him Nimrod to sarcastically comment on his hunting skills. Pretty cool. And there are even more of these words that have been twisted by the unfortunate passage of time. To learn about them, go to HowStuffWorks.com and look up our article, 10 Historical Words That Don't Mean What You Think. You will love it.